Hello and welcome to this video. Working on a project is not always a straightforward thing. You might work on a specific feature or try out something and then you might want to go back to the last statues of the project, the last clean and working statues. So basically you want to jump back to the last commit in your branch but you kind of want to save your draft that you're just working on. With the git stash this is easily possible without having to create a new commit for this draft status. So you can avoid such dirty commits you could say. So let's find out how this works now. So I prepared a little project. I wouldn't say it's a project, it's just an HTML file with a little bit of content. The important thing is that if I have a look at my project now, you can see that we have one commit right here in our branch. Now let's say you are working on a new feature right here and we could call it feature one. This could be anything like that. So any kind of new thing you are just creating and which is not finished yet. Now you want to go back to your initial situation. So the situation where you only had your first commit in here. As I said in the beginning, adding a new commit or creating a new commit is possible but kind of a dirty approach. Therefore you can use the stash command now. This works quite easily actually. You just have to enter git stash down here in your command line in your terminal and then hit enter. With that you can see that the newly added content we had in the third line is gone and we are basically back in our commit now. And if I go to git log down here, you can see nothing changed. Only our first commit with the starting code is displayed here. But if I now enter git stash apply like this, boom, then you can see that our feature one that we just added right here is visible again because now our stashed statues, our stashed project statues is loaded you could say back again into our main project. As you can see nothing is committed so far so we now have the option to commit this change and add it to our project or to keep on working on this stash, so on this draft version. So we could also say we add a second feature, feature 2 and we're working on both of these features at the moment. If I save this and now enter git stash once again, then you can see that our two features, so the two stashed features that we have are not displayed anymore. We are back again in our last commit that we actually have in the project. But if you now enter git stash list down here, then you can see where these two stashes are now. We have two stashes with the index of 0 and 1 right here and if we now enter git stash apply as we did it before, we can see that the last version or the last statues that we used with the stash command is displayed right here. If and I want to go back to git stash list to see the list again, you can see that we again have these two stashed versions and if I now enter git stash apply as we did it before but now enter a number. Then we can basically select based on these index numbers right here which stash we want to display right here. So the default behavior git stash apply is the one we just saw. This basically applies the most recent so the top stash right here, this one. But if I now enter git stash apply one for example, then you can see that this is not working because we basically applied a later stash, so the top stash, the most recent stash. So what we can now do is we can simply say git stash once again and then go back to git stash list like this. And as you can see this is the stash we just created and stash 2, as you can see the index now increased of course, is the stash we actually want to check out. So if I now enter git stash apply 2, then you can see we are back in the first stash that we created with feature 1. And what we could now of course do is we could keep on working in this stash and say another awesome feature right here. Like that, oops, like this. And now we could again enter git stash with, which would basically add the stash on top of the others. Or we enter git stash push, 
minus M and now add a description for the stash. This makes it easier for us to identify the stash and especially what we changed in there. So let's say added awesome feature like that and hit enter. If we now go to git stash list once again, you can see that our last stash right here has this added awesome feature description. So this helps us a lot to well identify the stashes, as I said. And here we have the other ones we had, the other stashes, which only can be identified based on this index number, which can be quite hard sometimes in case you don't remember which stash versions you had. What we could do now again is we could say git stash apply to apply our most recent one and we could add maybe right here, the final feature, like this. If we now enter git stash push minus m final feature, as you can imagine, if we go now to our git stash list right here, you can see all these stashes. Now what we can also do is we can get rid of these stashes down here because you might say okay we had these previous versions but actually I only need the last one or the stash one depending on what you need. Then you can also easily drop these different stashes and by saying drop this is also the command we need right here. We can simply say git stash drop and now we only have to identify the stash we want to drop based on the index number once again. So in our case, this could be this one right here. So the stash with the index two. If we hit enter, we see that the stash with the index two was dropped. And if I go back to git stash list now, you can see that now the previous stash number four. So this one now became stash three, stash three became stash two and so on. So if we now enter this command once again, and one final time, like that, then you can see that we only have our two stash versions right here with the description saved in our stash basically. Now the only thing we have to decide on is which stash, so which kind of draft version do we want to implement in our main project. Let's say that the feature is finished now and you want to add it. And you can also select this by simply typing git stash pop that's the command we need right here. And now again, the index number. What is going to happen then is that if you enter pop zero, the final feature right here will be added to our code right here and it will be deleted from our stash. The same thing can be done with stash one right here. So let's maybe add one here and press enter. And as you can see, another awesome feature is now displayed right here. And if I now say git add, like that and now commit minus M. Let's say awesome feature added like this. Then if we go to git log once again, we can see that we have this awesome feature added commit right here. And if we go down a bit, our starting code, but all the stash versions we saved are not displayed right here. But if I enter git stash list now, you can see that only this final feature stash is displayed because the other stash, the one we used right here, was added to the code and then kind of deleted from the stash. And now as we are finished basically, you could say I don't need the stash anymore. So I can simply enter git stash clear right here. And with that, if we now enter git stash list one last time, you can see we don't have any kind of stash versions of our code saved right here. And that's actually the git stash command explained in hopefully a few words. As you can see, this is quite helpful if you want to implement new features or play around in the code. And if you don't want to destroy the actual working main code that you have in your branch and in the last commit, for example. So I hope you liked this video and that you might even use this in your daily work now. So as always, I can only say thanks a lot for watching and hope to see you in the next or one of the other videos here on the channel and on academy.com. So, bye.